Hello, welcome to Wardrobe School. I'm Vanya. Today we're going to talk about what do you need to start sewing clothes, right? And I want to show you how uncomplicated this is. It shouldn't be too crazy. You should be able to sew clothing, right? I'm going to talk about two parts. One part is going to be about sewing for yourself and then the other, sewing clothes for yourself. And then the other part is going to be talking about, you know, sewing clothes to sell. And you can create a clothing line, you know, like as a designer and then send overseas to produce and stuff like that. But I'm not into that. It's not my thing. Okay. I'm really into like the handmade and you could start from what I'm going to talk to you about and then you move on and grow to do more. But I'm really into the sustainable way to make clothes, you know, recycled and all of that. So that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. So I, and so just so you know, I want to talk more about this because I want to encourage more people to create their own lines, you know, their own clothing, make clothes to sell to real people from real people. So this is something that I'm going to do more and more. And like, if you're interested, stay with me because this is my goal to, you know, really spread this because I did, a, you know, I started a brand years ago and I started from zero. I actually started a few times from zero. And it's totally possible. So, you know, if you have the, the will, you can do it. And I think it's such a great thing for the world and, you know, especially for America, how we can do that and just make small businesses, small brands and, you know, from the real people to the real people. Okay. So, and so, you know, I, the thing is, I don't see enough of that. That's why I thought like, you know, I see people who make clothes for themselves and that's great. And so the more you do, the better, you know, the more you can gift people with things that you made, handmade and stuff like that. I really appreciate it because it's handmade and, and people value that piece, right? Especially like when you learn how to make, you know how many steps go into making a piece of clothing. So it's cool to, uh, you know, everyone learned that, right? And then also when you gift to somebody, they will treasure that piece because it was handmade. So that's important, right? And then the, the, my, my goal here is like to stop people from trashing so much clothes, to see clothing as like this disposable item that it didn't used to be that way, right? And nowadays it's just like they go, they buy a bunch of stuff and then they get rid of it. And then we have this amount of extra stuff out there that we really don't, you know, we don't, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have a problem, right? Back in the day, they were like lacking of, they didn't have enough stuff. They didn't have enough clothing. And now we have way too much. We don't know what to do with it. So I, my idea is like to make, you know, bring it back, bring fashion back to our own hands. Okay. I used to have an assistant that she was like very creative. She wouldn't talk much. It was a girl that she was very quiet. She helped me with sewing in the studio and she was very creative and she made her own line of stuff. And it was super cool. And that's an idea for you. You can create a, a line with just a few pieces, right? You don't need to make uh, a, a whole line of clothing. Like if you, if you want to make, and I'm going to show at the end of this video, I'm going to show you like ideas that if I was to start today, what kind of garments I would make, or even for myself, what kind of garments I make, because, you know, I just, you know how I like to keep it easy, right? And so that girl was a great example because she just made like a few pieces and they were all one of a kind, but they kind of like had the similar, the same like cut, right? So she would probably, for instance, she would make leggings and they were, and then she would use like different patterns, you know, prints and stuff, but like the cut was the same. And then she sewed on Etsy or she would do like those nice, it was kind of like a sweatshirt, but kind of like with a cool style and she would pick like cool fabrics. She also worked with vintage fabrics. And then she had those like very cool pieces that would, she would sell on Etsy. And what she did was a like kind of a photo shoot that she was modeling the clothes. And she was like, you know, she wasn't really like a model, but it was like her style, the whole like atmosphere of what she, she, you know, the style she had, the way she looked and the lighting she used on her pictures totally made sense with the creations that she had. And then she would sell because uh, she did really great because, you know, people like to, they want to be part of that idea of her, you know, atmosphere. So that was really cool. And so that's an idea. And then other, I was thinking of like people who started, you know, I've seen a bunch, I've, I've done 
so many shows and markets and you know all sorts of places like and had stores and so i always seen people that started from somewhere like were beginners or something and so i was thinking of examples that i could uh, share with you and so this one was also a girl that i thought that she made underwear and she started making those underwear because you know underwear is a very easy i mean it's not easy to sew but it's an easy product to make because it's small, right? You don't have to invest much. You can make like little pieces. And as you know, it's not cheap if you're, if you're selling. So she started making those on the, it was just like woman. She made some bras, but it was mostly like panties. And she started making her house in her bedroom, just with a tiny sewing machine and then sewing, sewing, sewing. And that became such a thing. Everyone, the, the way she was making, you know, the prints and stuff that she was mixing attracted a lot of people. And then she grew a lot. She kept making and then she kept, and then she started hiring local seamstresses that could help her. And she created a small business in her community. And then she was selling to stores and now she sells online and everything. So, you know, she grew from zero. She probably just went and bought a small piece of uh, niche you know, a few colors and then made some pieces. And then th from there, she grew her company. Okay, I don't know now if she's probably making in shops and stuff like that, hopefully not. But I'm just saying like, you can always start from uh, a small production that just making yourself. And then from there, you, you do, you know, make a, co a big company later on. And, and one thing is, and if you'll be like, do I need machinery, right, for that? So what kind, because somebody asked me if they need a serger, for instance, to, if you want to sell pieces, do you need a serger? You don't really need anything special, okay? I've made, I've, I don't know if you know my story, but I've had a brand for a long time that's called, it was called La Vai Maria. And I've had many phases with that brand. Uh, in Brazil, I didn't know how to make clothes. And so I had people making my, I've sold a few clothes, it was mostly bags, but I sold some clothes and those clothes were made by seamstresses and they were done by pattern makers over there in Sao Paulo. And so that was one phase. Then when I moved to US, I was making by myself, I was just making bags and stuff. And then I made clothes and, and, and the way I made those clothes, it was like, you know, just very alternative and very home, like homemade. And then I had employees and this and that. And then after I, I closed my shop and after that, I went back to sewing just with my sew, little sewing machine and the studio, I had like a tiny studio. I actually started back in my apartment in the living room with a tiny table. And I was, going, I was like cutting fabric on the floor. And then I did, and then I was just, I had only my sewing machine. It was that brother sewing machine that you see on my old videos. That was my machine that I sewed most of stuff since the last few years, okay, before 2020. And I never, I have a, a surgery. I've had the surgery since my beginning here, but I barely use it because I'm lazy to thread the surgery. And so I usually just do zigzag to finish. So you don't need anything special. You need a pair of scissors. You need a sewing machine that works. Hopefully it does, uh, will do zigzag. Some machines don't do zigzag. I've had like a commercial one years ago that didn't even have a reverse. It was just straight stay. It was an awesome, like old singer that somebody gave it to me, I think. And so it, it didn't do zigzag or nothing special. It only did straight stitch and it wouldn't even do reverse. So I used that machine a lot because it was strong. So I made like heavy bags and, you know, I've worked with like heavy materials and stuff. You can do it, okay? Just, I encourage you to really start, get started, get started, make stuff for yourself. If you're, you're like, ah, I don't want to sell anything, great. Just make it for yourself and make it for your friends, okay? And you don't need anything special. So, and then you're like, but do I need a fashion degree? No, you don't need a fashion degree to start making clothing, okay? You can have ideas from the streets, from the magazines, from the movies. Sometimes you like, you have a certain style you like. I like vintage from the nineties and two thousands sort of. I also like from the fifties and back old, like really old fashion, old fashioned, <laughs> you know, from the thirties, from the forties. Like I like those nice dresses and stuff. And so that's the stuff I like, but you know, you might like the sixties, you might like a current, whatever is now that it's like kind of a mix of a bunch of stuff, you know, colorful, like loose silhouettes. You might like sweatshirts, sweatpants, you know, just make things you like. 
you don't want to start from lingerie, for instance. I, I gave you the, the idea of the girl who started making underwear. But if you don't, if you're not used to sewing a lot, so I recommend you to not start from stretchy fabrics. You probably heard me saying that before. But you can always like make a shirt, you know, make a simple shirt. Do you need to be a pro seamstress? No, you absolutely don't need to be a pro seamstress. Don't compare yourself to anyone and please don't compare yourself to me because if each of us is in one, you know, each of us have a story and you have your experience and you have your vision, right? I'm sure like I might know more about certain things in sewing, but you might know more than me in other things. And, you know, there's definitely people who know way more than I do. For instance, pattern making. I'm not like a pattern maker, but I make it work and th that works for me. It always works for me the way I do. And you might find a way that works for you, right? So what do you really need? You need an idea and you need a will, you know, if you want to do it and like an idea to, you need one idea to start really. So, and you can, and you need some fabric and a sewing machine, right? <laughs> so a fabric, scissors, sewing machine, thread, and an idea. And then you can make something. And the minute you make a piece of clothing that you dress yourself or you dress somebody, it's like a, a uh, really like a breakthrough because you you get encouraged to do more. Okay, so that's why you need to start. You don't need anything crazy or special or anything. Okay, I just encourage you to really go ahead and start. And then like, what do you need to? Let's like break down to like between what it's required if you're sewing for yourself and what's required if you want to do as a business, right? And one thing I want to touch, because somebody asked me about, how about sewing by hand? Can I do things by hand? You absolutely can, you know, especially if it's for yourself. Like, I don't ever sew anything by hand because I don't have time, right? I'm always like rushing to like, because I have to deliver, I, have, I do custom orders, I do markets, I do online, I sell online and stuff. So, to me, like the fastest I can do that, you know, I can well, make it work for me. And then that's how I make a living. Right. But if you're making something for yourself, it's like knitting. Like my mother, she loves crochet and knitting and she's fast. She can uh, knit something very fast, but it still, it takes way longer for you to knit something than when you're just sewing something. Cause you know, you can make a piece like in a half an hour, depends on your skill, but you can make a very simple piece in under an hour. And I don't think you can knit something in another, an hour so if you are knitting or you know i mean if you're making if you're sewing for yourself i would say yes do by hand because you can really construct a piece and make like some beautiful you can make beautiful appliques and then sew and then finish something nice that i don't know if i was to sell something that i sold by hand it would be a million dollars because it takes so long it's so much dedication right so that's something talking about by sewing by hand. I just wanted to touch on that because somebody asked me. And so now let's break down between what you need when it comes to sewing for yourself and when it comes to sewing clothes to sell, right? For yourself, really just need a simple pattern. What you should not do is to go for a crazy pattern. And I know everyone's obsessed with patterns. I am too. I love, I love especially vintage patterns. And, and there are different ones, right? There are some ones that are simple. It's just like a simple cut. It's like, for instance, a dress is like front, back, and the sleeves, and then might be one zipper, and you're good to go. That's the dress, uh, okay? Or sometimes it's even like some that you just like slip on, okay? And then there are the crazy patterns with many, many pieces, and then you have it's like a puzzle. I, if you're new, I don't recommend you to start from those patterns, the ones with a lot of pieces, because there are two important reasons for that that I, I never recommend this. One is like you don't really learn because you're trying to put a puzzle together and it's so complicated. I mean, you do learn, but you don't visualize like the simple. Remember how we're talking about this complicating, right? Or uncomplicated, like I said, I don't even know if this word exists, but like, if you want to make not complicated, you are, your goal is to make something that you can visualize it and you understand what it is. That's how I teach in my course. Like, you make a shirt, so you see, I want you to see what is that part. So that's the front. So you look at the front and you recognize that's the front of the shirt. You look at the sleeve and you recognize this is a sleeve and that's the front of the sleeve and that's the back of the sleeve. When you know that, you're ready to move on to, to more complicated projects. 
but you don't want to start from the complicated projects. One reason is because you don't learn much, and the second reason is you're going to give up. I've given up. I've seen every, many, many people giving up because it gets too complicated and our brain just doesn't want to deal with complicated things. We want to go for the easy things. And so if you're here trying to sew something and then somebody calls you to do something easier, you're going to go do the, the easiest thing and not uh, finish the complicated pattern, pattern you started. So what can you sew? You can choose a node pattern that is, or, you know, a commercial pattern that is simple. And if my finds, just, you know, one of, there's millions, right, that you can find out there. Or you can copy one of your clothes. Just copy a shirt, trace from the shirt you have, and then copy that one, okay? Even a t-shirt, if you're going to use a t-shirt that's a stretchy and you just have a woven fabric that's not stretchy, just to make sure you add a little more seam allowance, you know, a little more, consider that a stretchy fabric is different than, than woven, right? So you have to balance that. If a stretch, if a t-shirt is one size, and if you're gonna make the same cut on a woven fabric, you need to add a little more space, that room, so then it's not tight on you, okay? But that's a, an option. You can, you know, we did the workshop that we did pants and was super fun because a lot of people have never, that never made any piece of clothing, in their life, they were able to make pants from copying from their, their own pants they had. And so, and the other thing is those new, you know, how, how can I say that? But it's like contemporary pattern, patterns that you find online, you know, those that you download the PDF. There's a bunch of out there on Etsy and on the people's websites and stuff. You can find simple patterns that is like a boxy shirt or just a simple skirt that you can make. And then you make a pattern and uh, you make a, a garment and then you're happy. So that's a way for you to start if you're sewing for yourself. And then another step, which that's how I teach on my course. And that's a way I do for myself. It's using a, a base, right? So it's like the, we do like a bodice base and a pant base and a skirt base. And from the bases, you can, you know, you learn how to make the base, make sure it fits you really well. And from there, you create new designs. But this is how fashion works basically. Like you just do a, a base pattern and then you create different sizes and different designs from that base, making sure the base fits before you even alter anything. All right? So that, those are ideas for you if you're gonna sew for yourself. Now, if you wanna start a business, and I know a lot about that because I've started a business many times, I can tell you that you don't want to start from, at least that's not how I've seen people doing that. And it usually doesn't go well. It's how you just be like, I'm going to start a fashion line. And then you make 12 uh, items on, you know, in the collection or you design 12 items and you want to produce those items. Either if you're producing for yourself, yourself, like sewing yourself, or if you have help, I think that's a mistake because it's too much investment and you don't know if those are going to sell. You don't know if those pieces are going to, how the public is going to accept that. So in a marketing way, and also like, you know, from experience, I know that you, you need to test your market. You need to see if those customers that you have are like the, the what you're creating, right? If they like the material you're using, if you they, if they like you know the cuts that you have. Sometimes like we'll try to uh, me for instance when I moved here, I'm from Brazil and I moved to the U.S. and the body you know the the how how our body is made is different. Okay, like my torso is shorter than I know there's petite people here as well, but most Americans have like a much bigger torso than me. So. If I make clothes for my size, it's not gonna fit most of my customers here. Then I always have to co consider that. You always have to understand what is gonna serve your customer. And to find, out, to find that out, you don't wanna have like a collection of like 12 designs that each one is gonna have eight different sizes. And then you end up with a big amount of clothes that maybe people are not gonna like it. You might make a, a way that people like, but you know, not necessarily. So I would say, you know, try making a few pieces and also think who is your customer, for who you want to sell. Because it's different if you want to sell for 15-year-old girls or if you want to serve like 45-year-old uh, girls or men or, you know, it's different, right? So you need to, know. and also style, is it, is it for business 
or is it for you know students or what kind of customer are you trying to serve because people have different tastes and different lifestyles that you want to serve them well right so i would say honestly if i and i'm going to show you the pieces that i would do now if i would if i was going to start today i would i would say to you you know do a few pieces do two or three designs they're easy to fit you don't want to make like two I know you might have a style that you want to do that specific that is tight and like fitted, but the more fitted you make a garment, the hardest is to fit people or to fit different people. So I would make like a more like loose uh, style and then that fits more, more people. And then you can test small, you know, slowly. And then you just enter like two to three uh, pieces and then you go and show your friends and try on your friends. And then you show to people. And then there, if there's a, a market that you can join or you're somewhere, you know, one time, a long time ago when I first started selling in Brooklyn and I was not selling clothes yet. I was just observing like what people were selling. I remember there was a girl and I think she was a fashion student in New York and she had only, uh, ra and that, that was me like with a bunch of bags that was making, you know, crazy things. And <laughs> But then there was this girl and she was super cute and she had like a tiny clothing rack with just a few pieces, a few garments. And people were so drawn to her because they're like, that's, it was minimal, you know, it was just simple, but everything was like cohesive. She had like a few, and you could tell there was, the cut was the same. She just changed a few details on her pieces, you know, and then she sold, I saw her making sales because the, it just made sense and the the clients that liked that, they would like all of her pieces. And she didn't need to make a bunch of stuff. I don't know what happened to this girl nowadays, but I feel like that was such a smart way to start, right? Because she could test it. It was like testing the market and also like seeing how the garments fit on other people, okay? So that's uh, a tip for you. And, and then after, you know, <laughs> oh, that's, you know, uh, if you know my work, you know that I'll tell you to upcycle, right? Recycle clothes. And there is the thing about upcycling is cool because not only you can use the pieces as a material, you can get like, like I do, I, I'll go to the thrift store and I buy linen shirts and then I use that material to create new pieces, right? Or as you've seen, like I've made a skirt from men's shirts or I make dresses from uh, different shirts and stuff like that. But I also just do some garments that I just do a few alterations on the garment. And not necessarily has to be a vintage garment. At least that's how I, you know, it's my style. And, the, the, you know, I came up with this way to do it. But I'm sharing with you because I think it's helpful. It's like I pick pieces that I like. Either the, the prints, for instance, this shirt. This one I kept for myself, but this could be a piece that I with uh, upcycle or do something right and so there i can do two ways one i can take it apart and make something new but that would take more time or i can just use the shirt as is and maybe like just crop it just crop this and see how the sleeve is too long i could crop the sleeve or i could make a tank top or i could make uh even on my youtube channel you can see like how i make a peplum top from those silk shirts i crop it here and then i put the the peplum you know the the little ruffles and uh, or sometimes I take if it's long sleeve I crop the sleeve and then I take that part of the sleeve and make the ruffles and stuff like that so but then the the um, this part of the shirt which would be the hardest parts to make is already done right the buttons is done the pocket and you know all this and then that and because it's like a little uh, larger than me it fits most people right so the style is to me be a little loose and stuff like that so you just have to find the, like some system that you that works for yourself and that works for people that you you know like your customer avatar something like that okay and now i want to show you those pieces that i've made and i think those are good that fit most people it's fun and it has so, you know, you might be like, oh my God, but this is too boho for me. I get it. But this is my style, right? You could make like different, but it's just for you to get inspired, right? So for instance, this dress is a dress that I, I was going to make for, to sell, but then I, I ended up keeping it and it's totally made out of scraps. Look, right? 
and look it has this like shiny it's like navy with a golden thing and i didn't finish i kind of like the raw finish for this one especially because it's mine so it's just like a very you know summery dress that fits most people or you know and i didn't make make it like much large but you can make it even bigger and then it's like oversized if the person is small and if somebody bigger it will fit better but you know it's a great garment too and i every time i wear i get a lot of compliments and stuff this one though is, is an oversized and fits most people and it's also a bunch of uh scraps those is not scraps this is fabric that I got in Brazil. Look, it's like long, it's like maxi also. And it's very wide. I just put a bunch of uh, fabrics together, look. With a wide sleeve. And I think it's super fun. It's got, the skirt is like tiered, look. Okay, so think about if you make like a bunch of dresses like this. In different colors it could be solid colors it could be linen or it could be like or you can take pieces apart you know and do upcycling and it's easy you just need to do the boxy top and then add the tears right this one you I don't know if you've seen it but I made with silk scarves look Ooh, it's long and it's very flattering when you put it on and it's also like a size that fits most right and like i use scarves but you could use uh, fabric it doesn't need to be silk it could be other you know or you can take pieces apart if you get like oversized shirts or like extra large pieces and put it together you can make a dress like that this one i think uh, i'm not sure if you've seen it but it's also a good example that i made with scraps of linen when i make custom dresses that are and you know i buy like three yards and I don't use the whole yardage for the custom dress, I keep the extra pieces of linen and then I made this uh, patchwork and then the back I did that. And look, it's just like a boxy cut, very easy to sew and everyone loves this piece. I've, you know, I wear it in my videos sometimes, I post it online, everybody likes it. It is a great option to have, and what's, I mean, I'm talking, <laughs> I know I made it and I'm saying it's cool, but I, people tell me it's cool, so that's why. But it's like, what's cool about it is the patchwork, right? It could be, it could be solid as well. You know, people like solid shirts. This, a solid shirt on this shape will last forever. You can wear anytime, right? Because you can tuck it in, you can wear a jacket over it, you can, it fits with the skirt, with, you know, it goes with the skirt, pants anything right even like if you're wearing a um, jumper you know like a jump jumpsuit with those like uh, that doesn't have sleeves you can wear over it there's it's very versatile so a piece like that goes very well and so this is a, i would definitely if i was gonna start a line of clothing nowadays i would do something like this like maybe a bunch of patchwork and then some solid colors and also from there you can make a dress right you just lengthen it make it long and there it is, it's a dress. You can put a belt and make skirts, wear with skirts and stuff like that. Then this one, I wish I made it, but it wasn't, <laughs> I didn't. This is the Kenzo jacket that I've, I've talked about in uh, my videos. And I just wanted to show you because it's Kenzo, but guess what, it's so simple, the cut. And I know it's a design and it's based on a kimono. It's a vintage Kenzo, so it's really, it's not like they made it as, this was probably designed by Kenzo, I would say, I feel like it's old enough that was the company was still like uh, belonged to him. But and I know it has, you know, they put thought into it. It's, it is based on a kimono and stuff. But if you think about it, it's so simple. Look, it's a very simple cut, and it's just so wonderful. But then they play with the lining, and this is velvet. Look, I need to fix it because it was. Uh, look, it has this like defects here but i was just so happy to see you know this old kenzo that's just so simple okay so you imagine and you know how much a kenzo costs i'm just saying okay it doesn't need so a garment doesn't need to be complicated you don't need to be a pro you don't need to you just have to let it let your ideas flow and try this is one that i uh, posted the other day is like a jumpsuit 
and I'm so in love with this, with this jumpsuit look. And what I've done, okay, so this is a little more complicated because it has this cut, right, which is it's not so easy to accomplish, but it's also not too hard with, you know, this kind of cut. And then I also had the uh, facing here, okay? But that's the most complicated part. But basically, I just, I added the top to the pants and then made a straight line here, and that's it. And that's a jumpsuit. And it's a little oversized for me because I like loose clothing. But imagine, this could be a line of clothing on its own. And that's what I was saying. Like, you can do a, a couple cuts, a couple designs, and then make different colors. And then you master that one. You know, I, I wore this, and there's a little too open here for me. But, you know, if I, kept, if I keep making, making different new ones, I'll master this cut. And then I could make patchwork, I can make in silk, I can add a sleeve, I can add pockets, make different colors. Okay, and that could be a line of jumpsuits on its own, right? And then the last one is this dress that I didn't finish yet. But look, it's uh, just so simple. It's like an A-line dress, right? And if you have a base dress, like a base uh, shirt, a sloper, right? You can just open the, the, the line. I mean, you just trace a line from the, the arms I here down, like in an A design like that. And there you have a dress. Okay, and it's so simple. And then what I did, as I always say, I play with the materials, right? So this is like this old tablecloth. It's a print, look, it's an old print. And then it's a cool dress, like for summer. I can put a belt, and I think this actually has a pocket that I cut it somewhere in my stuff. I have to add the pocket. But I was just anxious to finish and I closed without the pocket. Okay, so yeah, those are ideas that you can accomplish like very fast, right? You can now go to your sewing machine and Try, make a piece, make a garment, take a shirt of yours. You can, for instance, for, to make a dress like this, you take a tank top that you have at your house, put a trace it on the paper, turn it inside out, place it on the table on, with a paper underneath, trace that, copy it, and then just in, lengthen, you know, go low, longer, and there you have a dress. And then you try on a piece of fabric that's not expensive. You can use an old sheet or any other old fabric that you have at the house. And so try it on and see how it looks. Try on somebody else and see how it looks. And then you have a garment. And from that, and like, look, it's never perfect the first time. But it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Nothing's perfect, right? Even like sometimes we buy expensive clothing and they're not, per they don't fit us perfect or they have issues and stuff. So it's okay if what you make is not perfect. Just try, make one, and then from there you can make it better. And I promise you, you're going to feel really good about it. All right? So I hope this helps. If you know people that would like this video, please share with them. And I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, please leave the questions below or send me a message on Instagram. And I'll see you next time. Okay? <laughs>